Greetings, comments. My name is Jake Antles, and this is an, uh, this similar to like the, the, the previous video about what, what I saw when I was in Bristol and Cheddar Gorge. This video, I basically talk about what I saw when in Whitecliff Bay. So we spent the whole day there in Whitecliff Bay. It was very over color, over uh, overcast and cold when we started. They started, but it, then it got warmer and cleared up a bit as the day went throughout. Which you'll see from these following pictures. So, so these pictures are what we had seen when we were at Whitecliff Bay, and as you can see here, it's a yeah. You know, I managed to actually get a picture of the entire uh, landscape in reference to what we we're looking at. So, as you can see here, there's a bit of a, a bit of folding going on in the left side of this picture of the rocks. Then there's you know, then the, okay, th there's, these are highly laminated, and then there was some uh, there was some large clay deposits here, and then some more clay and everything, some vertical bed, some vertical jointing of faults there, and this area was prone to landslides, as you, as, um, as I'll show you. So everything was basically at a 90 degree angle, and you know there, there, were base, there were various beds of rocks that were more resilient than others, as you can see in the floor here compared to the other rocks around them. Some of them were a bit different and some of them would be covered up by landslides, so it was important to see what kind of rocks were at the beach. And this this is my hand here with a glove, because I remembered my gloves this time. <coughs> well, I've actually found them. And this was a, this is a similar to a rock, to a bunch of rocks I had a lot of experience with and I found on a beach a few years ago. Basically, this is a bit of rock that the calcite in it had a... Oh, it should not zoom in. So this is basically a bit of rock that the calcite had recrystallized in, and it forms all of these weird, as you can see, shiny structures in here and all these weird things so basically the calcite in this had a was it now you know it, when it crystallized it was actually stronger than the surrounding rock around it so whilst the rounding rock uh, whether it was the, the rock around it slowly eroded away the calcite was a bit firmer and it remained you know and so it you know, so it remained after the rock was eroding away and it forms all these weird little basically veins and stuff that stick through rock and we found a lot of these veins but it forms these, all these weird little crystals and everything it was it was, it was you know it was, it was quite weird i had a lot of experience with this and I'll do another video at some point about the about a bunch of rocks I did find when I was in um Charmouth Bay. But for now this you know so I found you know I found rocks like this, a lot of them. And this is basically me showing how again I was experimenting with the type of picture or the type of camera I was using and as you can see in here, the, you know the these it was eroded quite deep inside the rock, but these veins managed to stick out and basically show what you know kind of what the original rock looked like. That's a terrible quality picture. That's still a terrible quality picture. Man, I'm, I suck at taking pictures sometimes. This is a little snail we found in that bigger uh, groin-like structure for the uh, for the rock layer that I showed you before in the perspective of the whole beach. And there's a little s snail there hiding in the rock. And these are this is basically underneath that groin. There's an area right away, and I found these weird little crate-like structures. I don't know exactly what was living under there, what it caused them, but I thought, hmm, that looks weird. And then this man, I'm terrible at taking pictures. Okay, this I'm basically holding is a mudstone rock and it had experienced it basically being fractured it basically dried out started cracking and everything and so what happened was when i dropped it on the floor it just broke apart along these cracks yeah and yeah mudstone is very weak okay the next picture just to show you perspective perspective where i took it it was oh man i suck at taking pictures it was along this section here so this what looks like this little buttress thing out there this next picture that i took was along there and as you can see Basically, this pick, this uh, this rock has been, has been this area has been prone to landslides and left this bit of rock sticking out, and so there were cracks all along here, which showed that this thing was going to fall apart soon. As we were told that we could, you know, we were told that we could go up against a cliff, a cliff face, but we need to keep an eye out for rocks above us and stay away from stuff like this because it was rather dangerous. And this rock was definitely dangerous. I didn't want that to fall on me. The sand is very dense. And then I took a bunch of pictures here about about the rocks. And what they and uh, what they showed here, as you can see from this picture, these squiggly lines here, they're basically be, they're meant to be like little worm burrows. Because you remember, you've got everything is at a 90 degree angle to what it was, so you've got to look at it from right to left to get an idea from top to bottom. So there are little worm burrows and everything found in the rocks. You know all that. I tried to get closer up picture, but I fear it may have been really bad. But you could see just how many there were, and we had to keep you know, be careful because sometimes when the clay is uh, is washed out of the rocks by the rain, it can. Uh, and then when the water evaporates, it leaves these like little glo globules and trails and everything, which is what some of these actually are. So we have to keep an eye out that, you know, we weren't taking, we weren't getting confused between one bars and that. And then this rock, it looks a bit weird, because and that's because I had to rush when taking this picture because I was halfway up this scree slope of mud and I was slowly sinking into it. So somewhere along this rock, there was a piece of plastic sticking out the rock. I don't know what it was doing there, but it showed that you know rocks can form very quickly. I mean, I don't know how that even that piece of plastic even got in the rock. Maybe dinosaurs could. Uh, 
they used plastic before us. Haha. Uh -huh. Nah, I still can't see in that picture. Um, and then we found uh, more of these. Again, we weren't too sure if they were actually worm burrows or if they were superficial deposits from a clay washed out of the rock by the rain. But you know, they looked nice to look at. They were nice to look at. I think mm, that you know, stripy and liney and everything. And then we also found these weird, harder, you know, more resistant areas of rock, more, you know, less prone to erosion as the rest of it. So as you could see here, you know, there's this. You know, sandy, there's a sandy rocks in here, and then we had these like weird little veins that would stick out, as you can see over here. You know, they're more resilient to the rock. I mean, we struggled to understand what they were. We thought, okay, maybe these either mineral veins or some kind of harder deposit left over from a worm burrow. We, we weren't too sure, to be honest. And you use some of the more of those worm burrows as, um, or what we think are worm burrows in perspective to the rest of the rock. There were quite a few of them. And then here, as you can see, there's some, uh, there's been some uh, vandalizing of the rocks here, but. We could actually see that there was a, there was a, this was a fault, and this there was displacement along this fault line. As you can see here, there's um there's a paler line of rock here, and then a paler line of rock here, and that's basically because this section of the rock had moved, the top section of rock here had moved to the, it sunk, it moved down to the right. Basically, this is an indication this thing had previously been previously been si uh, seismically active as it moved, and some of these fan these fan this vandalization was actually important because it showed whether or not. Um, because if this vandalization, like if there was a name here and that part of that name was here and part of the name was here, then we would know that this was still an active fault. Because this this rock erodes quite somewhat quickly. And if that would mean that if these things if these this is vandalization is still here, even after this this rock had been displaced, then they show that that displacement was recent. And then this is some more rock I took, but basically just you know, it was weird some of this rock. Like there was an overhanging feature here. And we thought that we found more fossils in the rock below it, but we weren't too sure. And if all these like weird little caves and stuff, we had to keep an eye out for rocks that were falling from here, because this actually did happen. There were pieces of rock and gravel and clay that were falling from the cliffs above us, and we had to keep an eye out for that. I continuously had to keep an eye out for when I was going near these, this, near this cliff face, looking up at the rocks, because I was somewhat concerned that the rock would fall, would fall on me. And sometimes pieces of rock, did, I could actually feel bits of... You know, clumps of clay and sediment falling onto my helmet that I was wearing, which every time that happened, I jumped back to make sure I was safe. And again, this is more what well, we, we we weren't sure if it was either clay, superficial clay deposits or worm deposit or worm burrows. You weren't again, they're, they're everywhere. It, it really bugs me how many there were because we weren't too sure exactly what they were talking about. Here's some more, but yeah, this whole section was made of sand. You know, there's all that. And then, and then there's some more again. Trying to put it, trying to put this into perspective because again, all the, all the, all the, the rain really messes this up because we can't tell what's worm burrow and what isn't. But then again, this this probably was a later deposit because there's a stick sticking out of that and that wasn't fossilized or it just wasn't preserved. And then we found some, and then here's evidence of basically the, what we what we feared, you know, bits of clay washed down the rock face by rain. There's just some laminations, and then there was this th there was this thin layer of of of, rob of rocks here in that hematite. Uh, Cement that I was talking about, which we then uh, took, which, which we then took a closer look at. It was it was very thin. You can see my shadow here, and um, it's basically trying to say, okay, so maybe this was laid down during some kind of a flood event. It was it was very thin, so it wasn't too it wasn't too long or prolonged experience event. But that, that so basically, I found this and I was very proud of it. And this is the best slightly back the better picture I took of it. And here's some more clay deposit. Here's some more clay washed down the rock face by rain. But that clay bugs me in that sense. And then there's these weird things sticking out of the rock face. I wasn't sure if they were fossils or something, but you know they were here. So in like this little, so in this in this little uh, enclo enclave here, you know this like this little section here, as you this hole. We I took try to take a as close picture as I could, and I found these little weird things sticking out of the rock. I wasn't too sure what they were. They could be roots. I don't know what. And then we found more of these. Uh, Again, we couldn't be too sure if there were worm burrows or clay. Damn it, rain! You're messing this up. And my friend found a whole bunch of these gypsum crystals behind these uh behind this mud. So this this muddy layer, as you can see, next to the rocks. He was basically looking at the rocks next to that, and uh, and he basically found all these like little yellow gypsum crystals that have been left behind when the sea retreated, and they were everywhere. Just look at all these little radiating acicular stuff. It was it was quite it was beautiful to look at. You had all these little little crystals all gathered together. Regardless of the conditions that they were formed in, it was absolutely amazing. And then I started tearing apart this part of the cliff face to take out huge chunks of the mud, trying to because this was basically mud. It was dry stuff. I was, you know, what what used to be it was desiccated now, you know, dried out. So I was tearing away these lumps of the cliff, trying to get to the stuff beneath it, beneath it. And this, this here, this line here is actually a single gypsum crystal that I had found. It was very large. So you have all these little ones here, 
but this was a large one. This was like this was like a over a centimeter long. And if you put it into perspective, put it into perspective, all these crystals here were maybe half a millimeter long. They were absolutely tiny. But these, this one here was huge compared to this perspective. I know it sounds tiny, but again, these crystals are. It's hard to find them. They're so they're so small. And again, you can see more of these gypsum crystals. These weird lines all along here. Very 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 tiny. Or stumps of them sometimes. But they're, they're all over the place. So many gypsum crystals. And here's some more I found. Oh grief! Please tell me I got a better picture. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So you know some more gypsum crystals radiating outwards. Again, no more than a centimeter long. Absolutely beautiful to look at because it was so. These crystals were so thin and so fragile. Yet they're being they're being kept here and. Exposed by me ripping apart the uh, the rock face. <coughs> Fun. And then here, because of the angle of the sun, it actually made the shadow stick out a bit more. As you can see, more gypsum crystals here, which I was happy to find. And then this was the first of the turbidity cur uh, current uh, deposit, the turbidite deposit that we had found. As you can see, various fossils all over here. This one is very very thin. And then uh, you know various clam shells and everything found in them. And then these, then there were two more beds. So there was another bed next to this one, which was this wider bed, very sparsely uh, uh, placed the fossils. And then there was a much thick, there was a much, there was a thinner bed, but much more densely packed. And I'll get onto that in a second. So as you can see here, there, 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 there here, the two of them. There's, there's the fossil bed here, and then there's another one over there. You can clearly see the fossils in here. But have to be careful because this was very fragile rock. And this was a very dense deposit here. As you can see, there were there were hundreds of these fossils, these clay fossils, these uh, so the hundreds of these clam fossils in here. And I'll try and find close pictures. That close close picture? Yeah, you can see all the clam shells and everything. So this place used to be a shallow ocean. All the clams were living. And then this was the f then this uh, it all led down here, and then finally onto this like drier area. So there were there were fossils in here too, but they were harder to find because they were in drier rock, and that was very hard to break. And then here's a bit of I had to keep an eye out about this clay. Up here, because that didn't drop on my head, especially when I was chipping away at the rock face with my, with a basically a bit of rock there. And the, and the problem, the problem was we couldn't really go beyond this section here, because after this bit of rock here, is in this corner, it was basically just a huge landslide, a huge landslide deposit. So you could look, you could look down, no, you could look further up the cliff, and you would see maybe it would go back for twenty meters, and then you'd see a bit of a fence, be, you know, they'd been fenced off, and then there was a bit of a fence hanging down, and bits of rocks fall, uh, had fallen in, so this is all had basically slumped and fallen down, so it really messed up our trying to, us trying to find the rock, the sedimentary logging, which we, went, we were meant to try to do, but we couldn't, because half the cliff face was buried under this rock, and then here, it was important, as you can see, there's closely packed laminations of the rock here, and then this weird shaped one here, and then some more closely packed laminations here, and the reason why is because this area used to be seismically, seismically active, and so sometimes, when the, when the earthquakes uh, occur, they cause all the they cause the water saturated ground to uh, to start moving, which causes which forces the water out of it, which can mess up the sedimentary layers uh, above it. And so what happened here was it was an earthquake that caused basically water to seep from this from the rock underneath this uh, to seep from the rock underneath all this into the sedimentary into the uh, sediment above, which formed all these weird bumpy stuff here. Now, brilliant explanation here, but it was it was quite high, so you had all the water being pushed, forced out of the ground here, and then pushed upwards here. And unfortunately, we didn't find a sand volcano, as the, those kind of deposits can be called. But it was it was interesting to see to know that this area is seismically active. Okay, this was a single fossil I found in a rock along along the beach. Okay, just a single just a single fossil, and then there were some more basically clam shells, very sparsely populated here, so the one turbidity currents. And this, I'm not sure what it was. I think it was. Another crinoid fossil, but I wasn't too sure because this was basically th there were two big rocks and there was a very thin space between them that had been eroded away. And I was trying to see, like th this 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 crinoid fossil was in between the two of them. So I was trying to point my camera angle so you could see exactly what it was in there. But it was very hard because of the, because I couldn't get I couldn't see the entire structure, which is a shame. It would have been a very nice crinoid fossil if it was one. And then this here, these, this, this basically was a section of rock that was falling away here. I tried to pull it apart, but I couldn't. It was too heavy, and it was too firmly lodged in place. But as you can see, these weird lines here. This is basically shows that this area had been previously dried out, and these are these are basically desiccation cracks, you know, mud cracks. So when you see in the movies where they show like a really dried out desert, and you see all the cracks in the ground, this is what those cracks are. So basically, this area it was mud that had dried out. And what's more, it was this was so you so just to see in perspective, there were there were all these cracks here. And then if I took a picture from the other side of that rock, okay, not not yet. Okay, anyway, as I say, relating back to the um, that 
seismic structure thing. This is basically a concretion, so, you know, you can't put a new mineral formed in amidst this, but you, this is all silt and clay and everything, and mud. It wasn't very well together. I was poking this and stabbing this with my pencil and it was all falling apart. Lots of fun, just trying to make the cliff face fall apart there. And this, this, I just yanked away this bit of rock here, so you could clearly see the lines beneath it. So, you know, it's a problem is rain messes up how we view the layers here. But as you can see here, they're very, very clearly defined, these, uh, this bedding. And I, I wanted to move away this rock too, but I was like, hmm, maybe I'm risking my luck as it is, removing this bit of rock. And it's a closer up picture of that rock there, as you can see, very well defined layers and laminations of the rock. And this is on the other side of that rock I was talking about, the desiccation cracks. So as you can see here, there are cracks all over here. Which shows that this has been, a, you know, this is the rock that has been deposited between two dry periods of time. Just catching more pictures of that. And this was again, Relating to what I said before, in um, and the, the very first, the beginning of this, this was all limestone, and we could tell because when you looked at it, this was the exact same color as that the rock there we found, and then here was some of those calcite crystals who had that had reformed here. I'm not sure exactly sure when, but it, you know, there's fractured here, and you know, they 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 just formed. These crystals are actually really sharp. I'll show you at another point just how sharp they can be. But that, but basically that was what we had seen at White Cliff Bay, and uh, it was nice to look at. I mean, I try. It's, it's you know, it was quite it was quite interesting to look at to see all this sort of stuff. But th these are all soft rocks, so all clay stone, you know, clay, you know, clay stone, silt stone, mud stone, sand stone, all, you know, all the weak stuff. Hopefully, we'll get onto the much firmer stuff. But then again, if I find fossils in those, on the bright side, they'll be harder and to break. But on the on the down down side, they'll be harder to get up than fossil the rock. But I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah, so that, that's all. That, that's that. That's basically White Cliff Bay, everyone. So I really enjoyed going there for my trip and looking at all the rocks and fossils and everything. There. So like the video, please do give it a like. And please do share my videos. And please do comment and think of them. Any other things you want me to do? Please subscribe to my channel so you can see more of this content. Please ring the bell to keep up with my video releases. Next episode, I'll uh, probably talk about my uh, more rocks that I found or when I went to the uh, when I went to my the rest of my trips this week. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy that and look at these rocks with me. Anyway, see you next video, comrades. Until then.